Hi guys, welcome to Office Blokes Reacts. I'm Office Bloke Dave. I'm Office Bloke Mike. I'm Office Bloke Daz. Collectively, we are the Office Blokes. A couple of other YouTube channels, Patreon page, social media merch, all that good stuff. Click the link below and it'll take you where you need to go. A little rhyme there. Yeah. Very nice. Terrific. Lovely. First for everything. Uh, right, this has been heavily requested. Yes. Um, I'm guessing it's going to be quite a deep one because you, there's not really any 9-11 related videos no. that haven't been really deep that yeah. I've seen. I remember watching a few of the documentaries over the years, like The Falling Man and things like yeah. that. And it's, it's hard watching, isn't it? Yeah, of course. <coughs> yeah. So I don't know what this boat lift, no. an untold tale, uh, I don't know what they mean by boat lift or if it is actually going to be a boat lift. And mm. Yeah, don't know. Not I've, sure. I've got no idea. But like I say, heavily requested. So we thought we'd give it a look. Uh, yeah, why not? See how it goes. So yeah, boat lift, an untold tale of 9-11 resilience. Let's get into it. I thought I was watching a movie, Towering Inferno at first. And then I looked real close and I noticed it was the World Trade Center. I was compelled because I'm a type of person that can't stand by and watch other people suffer. And to me, they were suffering. They wanted to get off the island. And there was no way for them to get off the island other than the water. And I had noticed when I was watching the television, I saw a lot of you know, the ferries going up into the slips and taking people off. I said, fine, we could do the same thing. I could take people on my boat, get in there, take them where they have to go. And that's what we did. It's fine. Even to this day, it's mm. absolutely incomprehensible yeah. what actually happened. And yeah. so, I guess people in the panic are trying to get off the island, like he said. Yeah. yeah. And were the roads, were the bridges closed, or were they just chopped up? No, they, up were, they or? were closed. They were, uh, they were just, it was just bedlam on it. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Is this when they collapsed this, or was it sort of like I've not seen it, mate. <laughs> oh right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think there's going to be after, after a plane hit and people realised something was going on. Mm. Yeah. I think there was no phone service for a lot of people because i think everyone was trying to get on the phone yeah, yeah. so getting off the island getting to your friends and family mm -hmm. and getting safe yeah. hugely important yeah it? just getting out of the area basically yeah. right whichever way you, you won't want to be near yeah. would you no and then you've got all the heroes running towards it yeah. it's Absolutely. like normal, yeah of course you know. yeah on the morning of september 11th when the towers came down millions of people ran for safety. Hundreds of thousands of them ran south to the water's edge. Wow. That's when they realized that Manhattan is indeed an island and that they were trapped. <clears throat> they were feeling helpless. And that's the worst feeling in the world. What was a person on the ground going to do? Buildings were down. There were people laying under the rubble of the building, firemen civilians. My wife was there and I turned around and I says, I've got to go do something. Just like that. And she looked at me. She says, what are you going to do, you maniac? I says, I'm going to take the Amberjack up into the city and help. She says, but what if they're attacked again? I says, well, then that's something I have to live with. I says, I have to do what I have to do. I says, and nobody can stop me right now. Even if I save one person or I rescue one person, that's one person less that will suffer and die. They were trying to evacuate Manhattan because nobody knew what was going on. You know, you didn't know if something else was going to happen. It was just a, uh, you know, a madness on one side and you know and wanting to help people on the other side they were just streaming out of the buildings and the first mode of transportation they saw was a, a ferry boat that's when they knew this is how i'm getting out of here so they didn't even care where the boat was going there wasn't panic in new york in the beginning just volume so it wasn't until the first building fell that there was panic <laughs> Oh, 
You heard the building go down, but we're in the slip, so we can't see it. That's when we started letting go, and then all of a sudden, boom, engulfed. You couldn't see anything. People were actually jumping into the river and swimming out of Manhattan. Boats were very nearly running them over. Wait, 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 wait. These people wanted out of Manhattan no matter any way they could. Somebody wants you to go over there. It's just unbelievable. It must be absolutely terrifying that. How wow. far is it when they're saying they're jumping in and swimming out of Manhattan to get off the island to land? How far are we talking? Well, I don't know, we meet or whatever. <coughs> yeah, the, the, but it's, it's the East River and the... Uh, swimmable, though, is it? Uh, it? It wouldn't be swimmable, but you've, you've got... In Boats boat everywhere. Up and down, yeah. you know, in, yeah. in emergency services as well, where yeah. you've got, you know, they're all trying to get wherever they're going fast. Yeah, and visibility, visibility when that cloud mm. comes over is yeah. going to be horrific for uh, boats. I, I guess most people won't be able to swim it anyway. Correct. You know, I suppose it's swimmable if you're a good it's swimmer. Good, very, very good swimmer. I'm sure yeah. most people, mm. you know, probably won't mm. make it, would they? No. I wouldn't have thought. Jesus. So it's, uh, oh, it's terrifying. Really, isn't it? Yeah. I what I didn't consider was there's still the imminent threat, and that's why everyone wants to get off the island because yeah, who no knows knew. what's going to happen. No one knew what was Absolutely, going on. Yeah, yeah. You know, was, uh, I remember my wife calling me and saying, "Some you know, planes at the trade center. Where are you?" And I'm like, no, "Planes at the trade center." Thinking it was like a, bit, a little pro prop plane that's still yeah. dicking about, and you know, what's happening? She said, it's, "Someone moving back in the office." Someone said, "It's a seven six seven. I had all the model planes on the side of the yeah. shelf. I went at seven six seven. That's a fucking seven six seven. I mm. said, "No chance." Yeah. That's when we got the TV on and we were in a basement uh, office block and it was like we, we couldn't get very good reception. We managed to get the Spanish channel <clears throat> and someone was sort of like translating it for us and it was just devastating. I was just like, what the fuck am yeah. I seeing here? Yeah. So why, were you in New York? I was in New Jersey. In New Jersey mm, at the time. Just across the water, yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's unbelievable. You could see it? it. You could see what was happening from our offices yeah. uh, up, up, up on, the, on the higher floors. I just fucked yeah. off to the pub. I yeah. just went down and sat in the local bar and watched it on the TV. Yeah. You know what was happening before I thought, now I can go home sort of thing. Now I know it's sort of like all calming down a little bit. Yeah. You know, it's safe to sort of like go home sort of thing. Mm. Yeah, it's tough watching this, mm, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Every mode of transportation out of Manhattan was shut down. All the subways were shut. The tunnels were all closed. They closed the bridges. They closed everything immediately. They closed the bridges, yeah. Boats. Usually an afterthought in most New Yorkers' minds were for the first time in over a century the only way in or out of Lower Manhattan. The process that actually had already started, there were some boats that were grabbing people, that people were lined up at the walls. On the left, on the left, on the left. It's just human nature. You see people in distress on the seawall in Manhattan begging you to pick them up. You have to, you have to pick them up. They didn't know what was going on. They seen the building getting hit with these two planes. As far as they were concerned, you know, we were being bombed. I was wondering if they were gonna come on the boat, if, if they were, had people with bombs or if they were gonna come on. We're a big orange target in the middle of that harbor. My job is to keep the boat safe, my passengers safe, my crew safe. Everybody was in shock, running around. They didn't want to leave the family. They had loved ones running around the city. One guy ran from the apron and jumped onto the boat. He grabbed onto the metal, climbed up right next to the pilot. So I'm going out there to say something. He slides down to the next deck. So the, the deck hands get him and go, what, you know, what are you doing? He goes, I'm jumping for my life. So, you know, you couldn't argue with him there. <coughs> there was a small boat that was uh, at the lower tip of Manhattan. I thought the boat was gonna flip over because so many people were trying to get on. And as I looked behind, they were, they were just 10 deep. And that's kind of what gave us the idea. We decided that this has to get better organized and we better do it, and that's what we did. So we decided to make the call on the radio. All available boats. This is the United States Coast Guard board, the pilot boat in New York. Anyone want to help with the evacuation of Lower Manhattan? Report to Governor's Island. When that call came on the radio, they were coming. I was uncertain of who was going to respond. About 15, 20 minutes later, there are just boats all across the horizon. Literally 100 targets converging on the lower part of Manhattan. When we came out of that dust cloud, tugboats, I'd never seen so many tugboats all at once. 
They were just a, like a fleet of tugboats headed to Manhattan. If it floated and it could get there, it got there. All different size, shapes, and form. I mean, and they were zooming across this water. Ferries, private boats, party boats. I worked on the water for 28 years. I've never seen that many boats come together at one time that fast. One radio call and it just came together just that fast. It's absolutely mind-boggling, isn't it? <clears throat> That's human nature, isn't it? Want to help yeah. as well. You know, send the call out and they just all go, don't they? It's like a modern-day Dun- uh, Dunkirk, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, sinking that. Modern equivalent yeah, definitely. Of it. Yeah, it's hard to watch. It really is hard mm-hmm. to watch. Hundreds of boats converged on the city, leaving the sun-bathed harbor behind them. Dead ahead, the unknown. That was something I won't forget. It was just low, dark, accurate black smoke. It was like there was a big chimney in Manhattan. When we pulled into Pier 11, the dust was unbelievable. And then out of nowhere, you just kept on seeing people coming. They looked like zombies coming through the fog, and you knew that they were, those were human beings. Don't leave us. Please don't leave us here. Take us. Do you need help? Do you need help? Do you need help? At that point, the Coast Guard said, not how many people are you allowed, how many people can you fit? Come on, guys. Anybody coming? Get your ass over here now. Boats started hanging, literally would take a bedsheet off a bunk and then a can of spray paint and paint their destination on. Some of these people never been in the water, never been on a boat before. Housewives, <laughs> workers that do windows. We had executives. And the thing that was the best. Everyone helped everyone. I want you to hold my hand. Come on board. Get inside. One at a time. Get inside. Come on, come on. I saw four businessmen lifting up an old woman with a seeing eye dog, a German shepherd, and they lifted her up like a surfboard and passed her over the handrails. When we would carry a load of people over, and there was somebody standing there that seen her husband or wife, you know, that made us feel even better, you know. Well, at least we got two back together, you know. So keep on going, you know. The guy that works at the ferry, he's a, a welder. His son was on my boat. He he actually came up. Uh, he thanked me. We went back and forth all day long, carrying boatloads, as many as our, our boat would hold. And it was a lot of people. A lot of people. You couldn't have planned nothing to happen that fast, that quick. No training. This was just people doing what they had to do that day. You forget all about what you're supposed to do, what the teachers do, and you say, you know what? Morally, this is the right way to go, and deep down, this is what I'm gonna do. Average people, they stepped up and uh, when they needed to. They showed me, you know, when the American people need to come together and pull together, they will do it. I do feel a way honored that I was a part of it. It was the greatest thing I ever did with my life. The greatest day that I've ever seen in all my boating, I mean, my life on the water. The great boat lift of 9-11 became the largest sea evacuation in history. Larger than the evacuation of Dunkirk in World War II, where 339,000 British and French soldiers were rescued over the course of nine days. On 9-11, Nearly 500,000 civilians were rescued from Manhattan by boat. It took less than nine hours. Wow. Some going, isn't it? Wow. I believe somebody has a little hero in them. You gotta look in. And it's in there. It'll come out. It need to be. I have one theory in life. I never want to say the word I should have. If I do it and I fail, I tried. If I do it and I succeed, better for me. And I tell my children the same thing. Never go through life saying you should have. If you want to do something, you do it. Wow. 
deep. Yeah, amazing <clears> story, that. Amazing story. I had no idea. No. It's not been, I've not seen it sort of highlighted before, really, yeah. you know, uh, that side of the evacuation or anything. I guess there's it's, so many examples of so heroism stories, that day yeah. and stuff. That, yeah, uh, you know. of course. It's both ends of the spectrum of human nature as well, isn't it? Yeah. You get these murderous arseholes that are, you know, flying planes into buildings, but then that's a proper side of human nature, isn't it? You know, people that want to help other people and do yeah. anything to help them. Suspension you know, between people step shit up. and cowardice, cowardness and, and hero, the normal heroes. And, yeah, you know. absolutely. Indeed. Yeah. It's just no, that's <laughs> amazing. I mean, the amount of people that have got out then in like nine hours, I mean, wow. Yeah. That is some going that is. So like Amazing. I say, it's touch his own for me because I was there at the time and it was um, I knew some people that were involved um, a couple of people lost their lives and uh, one of my mates went missing um, but people have been suffering from it a long time afterwards as well yeah, I don't know, I yeah. Imagine. yeah. well I say that dust cloud they're saying there's linked yeah. to sort of respiratory that problems it, yeah. and it's cancers and stuff it, I mean, it's absolutely it huge wasn't it it was more like a PTSD type style uh, right okay illness, yeah. I don't know. but yeah it's tough, tough it's to just watch. still to this day doesn't seem real no no, I know what you mean. You know, when you, yeah. you watch footage and stuff like that, and it's like, that's just... Well, we're watching it thing. over here on the news, and it's like you were like, like that after the time mm. of your mouth wide open, you think, what the hell's happening? I mean, it was I mean, it's sort of a bit frightening over here, eh? but God knows what it's like. I mean, you were yeah. there, weren't you? Mm. It must have been even, you know, a hundred times mm. worse, you yeah. know. Over here, it's like, you know, what the hell's happening? But I couldn't comprehend it. Like, I, I said this on exactly, the video yeah, the other yeah. day, you know, a, a, an Irish guy ran out of his house and said, the Pentagon's been bombed. And we were all like, what are you talking about, mate? And then I walked home, my bro and my dad were sat watching the news and watching it live and the first plane had hit and then when I started talking to them the second plane hit but I couldn't comprehend it I didn't know what, mm. what it meant in my head I was watching it and I was like I don't understand like it doesn't yeah. compute whatsoever yeah, yeah. such a, yeah, such a huge it's what, cause it is just unprecedented wasn't it you know mm, no yeah. one had seen anything like this before no. playing out on the news wasn't it live as well you know it's just uh, yeah not seen anything like it before it was difficult to comprehend and work out what was happening you yeah. know, and then all the things kept happening as well. So you think, you know, when's it going to end sort of yeah. thing? What's next? Well, that's you it. Know? Then you hear about, you know, a plane being shot down. You hear about the Pentagon and stuff. Yeah. It was such a dynamic situation, wasn't it? But then you get these people going into danger, don't you? Yeah. You know, these guys on the boats, yeah, the emergency right. services, unbelievable. Proper heroes, aren't they? Are, absolutely are, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I mean, that side of it I'd never heard of before. No, same here. Yeah. Yeah. That's new to that's me, that. Really, yeah, yeah, really interesting, that. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. 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 Hope you guys like that too. Don't forget like and subscribe. Hit the bell. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. Cheers, Cheers. guys.